Um, and uh, like Nick, I want to acknowledge the huge resource uh, that we've got here in Canterbury and in this room, and a lot of people who have dedicated a lot of their f professional career to working with um, people who have perpetrated um, uh, domestic violence or sexual violence and those who have been harmed by it. I think we're very fortunate um, in Canterbury. Um, we provide a uh, range of services. Um, STOP's been around for, a bit like stopping violence services, for um, 25 years, you know, 30 years. Um, it's, a, it's, a, it's a long time. Um, and um, we uh, are there because we've been able to collaborate with other organisations and work with government to provide our services. Uh, we work closely with corrections around the um, adult um, sex offenders, those that have um, got a conviction for sexual offending, and um, like the corrections programs, um, clients that um, drop out both of the adult program and the youth program through our research are the highest risk group. And so we've put a huge amount of work into looking at the factors uh, that affect dropouts and trying to recognise those, those clients uh, at an early stage uh, rather than actually wait until we, you know, they sort of drop out of treatment. So our services fall into three categories, working with adults. Now we're using this term harmful sexual behaviour. It's, um, we used to call it uh, sexually abusive behaviour or sexual offending. Harmful sexual behaviour seems to be a more generic term now uh, in the research across the world, so we're sort of using that term. Um, uh, adolescents with harmful sexual behaviour, which go up to adolescents, you know, 17, 18. And over the last um, five or six years, we've been working with children uh, as young as five who've been engaging in what we term concerning sexualised behaviour. So this is behaviour that's outside the developmental norm, and I'll talk about that in a minute. We also um, work closely with government um, and do professional training and community education and um, advocacy to government around policy and, uh, and research. Uh, we essentially cover the whole South Island and um, you can see there, I don't know if you can read it from the back though, but we started in Christchurch in 88 with the adult services then the adolescent services in 93 and the children's services in 2005. And then throughout that time we've expanded our services right through the South Island. So it's a big reach that we have and we have bases in Nelson, Christchurch, Dunedin and Invercargill. We work um, closely, we work as a, as a sector group with two other organisations, one in Wellington and one in Auckland, Wellstop cover the lower, South, uh, lower North Island, SAFE cover the upper, um, sorry, the lower North Island, SAFE cover the upper North Island, and um, STOP covers the largest geographical area. Um, and as a sector group, we, we contract um, to deliver our services to corrections, clients, to the Ministry of Health. The Ministry of Health is clients who are under orders, they're intellectually disabled sex offenders, um, and they're under orders under the IDC, the Intellectual Disability and Compulsory Care Act, which is an innovative act that came in, I think, 2005 to keep intellectually disabled sex offenders out of prison. And I think it's been largely been successful, although we still get some clients, uh, men who end up in prison who really um, should be under this order. Um, and our biggest um, government that we work with uh, is um, MSD, both Childish and Family and FACS. This collaborative group, um, the, the purpose of this is to try and, uh, well, we, we benefit by working together, sharing our ideas, sharing resources uh, in terms of training, benchmarking practices, research. So we always do our research as a whole sector group. Um, and we, as I said, contract with, with government as a whole sector group. Um, yes, I think I've covered that. And I suppose the other big part of our work is collaborating with other NGO providers, both locally and uh, nationally. In terms of uh, referrals, I was thinking, what are the two sort of two key messages I wanted to get across today? One is our services are free. 
And secondly, our services have shown through research to be extremely effective. So I think those two messages I'd like you to take away. Um, but like a lot of organisations here, we are not meeting the full demand that, it, that are out there. And so there is this sort of um, funding demand gap that we're, we all struggle with. In terms of um, referrals there, you see most of our referrals for children's work come from uh, childhood and family, but uh, we can take referrals from any, um, any organisation, any of you can refer um, children to us and they can be pulled under our contract with MSD. For the youth service, again, the uh, majority of our referrals come from childhood and family. Um, we've got less capacity to take referrals for youth services from, from um, community organisations, which is a real issue for us. Um, we don't believe that um, you know, it's a good thing that youth need to be charged for their sexual offences or um, before they can come to us. And in terms of the adult service, it's slipped off the bottom of the, uh, oh no, there it is there. Um, corrections account for about a quarter of our referrals and the others are spread out through um, other government um, and community organisations. In terms of the referral criteria, um, if you're talk talking about children um, who are exhibiting concerning sexual behaviour, this is sexual behaviour that's not developmentally age appropriate, so adult type behaviour that these children are engaging in with, with other kids. Um, if the child is pr preoccupied or obsessed by sexual behaviour um, outside the developable norm, as I, as I said, and the child has not responded to clear um, guidelines that um, you know, parents or, or other carers have, have um, tried to work with them. We, we have done and, and do, um, I'd like to do more of training with um, teachers because a lot of this uh, concerning sexualised behaviour gets um, uh, occurs in a school setting because that's when kids are mixing with other kids and it's amazing to me you know, that they are so creative in making those opportunities to engage in this um, concerning sexual behaviour outside the watchful eye of, of, of teachers. Um, so we've been working with schools in trying to increase the um, school's capacity to draw to, to respond to this behaviour at an earlier stage so that the behaviour doesn't develop a life of its own where it needs to come to us. And um, it's been a, a, a real surprise to me when we have done this training, we've, got, we've had um, principals and DPs and senior staff, and um, when we do a bit of a con continuum about what they see as being acceptable sexual behaviour from children, you would think that you know, there would be a, a general agreement amongst the um, you know, educators, but in fact there isn't. So you've got people who are this, you know, from there to there. So we'd like to do a lot more of that, um, as uh, many of you would. Um, in terms of the youth services, we're defining harmful sexual behaviour in terms of looking at the nature of the relationship between um, the person, whether it was um, harmful or abusive. And these three factors are quite useful, I think, in determining uh, whether behavioral sexual behaviour is, is OK or whether it's abusive. Um, lack of informed consent, inequality and coercion or force. I mean, it's quite a simple sort of um, measure, but, but quite effective. And with the adults, we're dealing with both convicted sex offenders and uh, those that are non-mandated that get referred from a community councillor, a church, or a GP. Um, and like corrections, we um, are interested in assessing their risk and um, as a way of um, determining what is the best intervention with, with those clients. Sorry? Oh, two minutes. Good, it was going quick. Okay. The adult program, essentially a group program over 12 months, um, starting with a risk assessment and with a strong family component um, and uh, research that shows a, a, only a 5.2% um, reoffending rate, which is actually low. Um, okay, my fancy... Um, uh, 
Oh, there it is there. So in terms of the adolescent program, uh, the interventions over 12 to 18 months period, assessment, um, family involvement, um, system reviews, community, um, hooking into the community supports uh, for the young person. Sorry that we don't have time to go through that, but um, you can see how all of those different aspects, individual family, group therapy and social support all blend together for the treatment work. Uh, it's a new service, if I've got time, that we've um, developed in a targeted way over the last 12 months as a girls service. We've always had teenage girls referred to us over the last 20 years, but we've never had a, cl a cl sufficient cluster of girls to um, deliver a targeted program. And when you look at the research, um, the research is very clear that they need actually a very gender-specific program run by f experienced female um, uh, professionals and um, the girls tend to, do, tend to they tend to be invisible they tend to be in the mental health service and victim services and the harmful sexual behavior aspect of their presentation often gets hidden by the girls to um, the um, professionals who are working with them so really our focus here was to find these girls and bring them into a service where we could actually focus on their harmful sexual behavior it's very, very um, challenging work, but um, I think it's, uh, you know, so far, so good. The children's work, obviously, we are using um, a lot of um, therapeutic play. In fact, most of our children's team is on a sand tray workshop today, otherwise one of them would have been here. But one of the things that we do is we work with the child and the um, parent together, pretty much for the most part. We might see the parents separately, but we, um, we want to, and the reason for doing this is we want to um, increase the parents or caregivers' capability in managing the child themselves rather than them becoming dependent on us for long-term individual counselling. And that's, I think, been a very, very effective decision. So it's a short-term intervention. We try and cap it at six months uh, or less if we can. And like I say, that high level of, of family and child involvement using... Uh, a whole range of um, therapeutic um, play activities. Um, and of course working with the school setting is, is, is critical. So every yeah, child that we work with, we're involved um, with the school. My time's up. <laughs> There's the contacts and we have, um, we have our new brochures, hot off the press, get it sorted, adolescents. Um, talk, play and stay safe, uh, adolescents, and um, exploring back, moving forward, the girls' program. So they're at the back. Um, thank you for your time. Any questions? No time for questions?